we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is How Hacks Work. This episode is all about cars, and whether it's cruising down the freeway or honing your skills on the racetrack, we'll show all you petrol heads out there how to put some va va into your next road trip. Time to mirror, signal, hack, as we blaze onto the open road with more car tricks than Vin Diesel in a traffic jam. If they could invent some sort of flying car, that would be my dream hack. From turbocharged cake to a sci-fi speedometer and a steamy car you won't want to leave. And in our epic hack finale, we'll show you how to get a burst tyre back on your car faster than it takes to pop in the first place. The fuse is lit. Lawn mowing isn't exactly exciting, but throw in a parked car and a seriously daring gardener and you found a way to turn a boring weekend chore into an adrenaline fueled afternoon. Here he goes, boys. Terry, he's letting off. <laughs> With nothing more than a complete suit of armour, this guy is confident enough to launch himself and a lawnmower over a parked car for some reason. What makes the lawnmower travel through the air is projectile motion. The only force acting on it really is gravity, so it's a kind of race against how fast it's initially going and how fast the gravity can suck it back towards the ground. Why don't people learn that gravity always wins? In a normal vehicle designed for this sort of thing, you have suspension. These are giant springs that help to absorb that shock. They spread out that force over a longer period of time, so the impact is less. Suspension may have been lacking for this horticultural hot rod, but luckily, he had enough horsepower in his tank to propel him to safety. But even the fastest cars with the most horsepower still max out at around 200 miles per hour. Why, I hear you ask? Well, the culprit is science. Because when a car accelerates, as well as being really loud and scary, it also has to move a huge wall of air. This creates a drag force. The faster the car, the bigger the wall of drag and the more power you need to keep that wall moving. Enter aerodynamics. A streamlined car will have you cutting through the air like a speeding samurai. Plus, aerodynamic cars look awesome. But to beat the hallowed 200 mile per hour mark, you'd still need to turn your runaround into a rocket-powered missile, which bizarrely seems to be frowned upon in nearly every highway code. Whilst we appreciate these guys have made every effort to break this speed record with their souped-up grass guzzler, Unless you're prepared to convert your garden into a ramped-up rally track, this is not useful. A lawn mowing miss. You know how sometimes your car gets so hot you could swear you could fry an egg on it? Well... I was going to say ruining a perfectly good car to make a barbecue is a massive waste of money. But then I saw the car. I wouldn't call it a car barbecue, though. I'd call it a car barbecue. The hat works by attaching the drive shaft to the engine to the spinner of the kebabs through a system of pulleys and gears to slow it down a bit. If your food gets too hot, you can just drive along and the breeze will cool it down and then it's ready to eat. Genius. Let's not go throwing the word genius around too casually, George. The car I would use to make this out of, though, would be a Lamborghini. The smell of diesel fumes is nothing compared to this ingenious bonnet-based barbecue. It's a hunger-busting hack hit. If you literally want your meals on wheels, this video will definitely rev your engine. 
This delicious hack makes driving a piece of cake. It was always a dream to have a moving cake, and I can't believe someone's actually gone and done it. World peace, meaning of life, moving cake. Dream big, Chris. This is a brilliant idea if you've got a sushi restaurant and you don't want to fork out on one of those expensive conveyor belts, you can just drive the food around. The remote control encodes the position of the buttons uh, into radio waves, and then that gets picked up by an antenna on the car, and that gets uh, transcribed into the movements of the car through the circuits within the car. You make it sound like so much fun, Ali. How long a cake lasts really depends on what it's made from. Your standard sugary spongy cakes will only last a few days before they go stale and they go a bit hard and crumbly. What you really want is a fruit cake. If you're a petrol head with a sweet tooth, this tasty roadster will be the icing on the cake for your next birthday. A hit! If you see someone lifting up a car, you're either watching a World's Strongest Man competition or an Arnold Schwarzenegger film, right? Wrong. This bionic bumper-grabbing superhero has found the secret to getting your car out of any tight spots. If you think that looks cool, you should see this guy trying to get up the stairs. Exoskeletons are really exciting because they could be used to help people with disabilities who can't walk or can't move certain parts of their body. An exoskeleton alley is an entire external skeleton consisting of rigid components that protect an organism from the elements. In other words, it's two metal poles strapped to a winch. What this guy's done is he's basically reinforced his own skeleton with metal on the outside and he's used pneumatic pumps instead of muscles, which can put more force through. So you're basically saying this guy's Iron Man. It just feels like it's a machine that lifts up cars that he's standing in, and it doesn't feel like he's actually doing anything. You could remove him and the machine would just lift the car, it seems. Let's face it, this guy could have saved time and a fortune if he just bought a car jack. A downright miss. So far, we've seen a car leaping lawnmower and a way to guarantee your motor will get noticed at the next street barbecue. Keep that engine ticking over, though, cos coming up, we've got a real-life transformer. Don't worry, it's one of the goodies. And later, with the help of human guinea pig Marcus, our resident epic hack maestro Mike will be deploying fireworks in the name of roadside recovery. And yes, I did say fireworks. What else did you expect? If you love cars so much you actually want to be one, then you probably need to visit a psychiatrist and watch this clip. It's a guy that turns into a car. A very small, very slow moving car with no engine, but a car all the same. Not 100% sure exactly what the point of this is, but it does prove that when it comes to impressing random strangers, size isn't everything. When I first saw this hack, I initially thought it was a dog in a car costume. A dog wearing shoes that can stand upright? Ali, have you ever seen a dog? If you're worried about traffic wardens, if you see one coming, you can just jump up and run away. No Cars episode would be complete without a Transformers hack now, would it? A Decepticon busting hack in disguise. Hit! We've all experienced the nightmare of not finding a parking spot in rush hour. Well, this next driver had a rather extreme solution. If you've parked your car like this and a traffic warden comes along to give you a ticket, you can simply say, I was just running into the pharmacy to get my medication because I'm mad. Mad brilliant at parking, more like. Literally the only way I can think this guy got onto those blocks is with a jack to lift up the car or a team full of friends who are willing to help him. Getting down again, same job. So you might think, looking at that car, how can those columns support it? Because they look quite fragile and quite thin, but actually the posts are made of concrete. Concrete's quite an amazing material in that it's very hard and has a really massive compressive strength. If you put something very heavy on concrete, it tends to distribute that weight well across the whole of the body without crumbling. So even a very narrow block can hold the weight of an entire car. The way that you make concrete is you take powdered limestone and clay and you mix it in with water. The water allows all of those different pieces of rock to hydrate and they start forming tiny crystals within the structure of the cement. Those crystals continue to form over time. So actually, concrete will set very hard, but it'll get even harder as time goes on. 
This is one hack that is guaranteed to hack off a lot of people. A mad miss. Over to Hack HQ now, where Mike is about to show how car tyres are so much better than humans at dealing with different temperatures. Mike. Marcus. Ready to hit the road? Maybe a bit later. Now, today is our car's hack, but I've got to fix this big tyre before we can get on the road. Something tells me this isn't going to be a normal tyre change. Yeah, but that's going to take ages, so what are we going to do in the meantime? Not the way I do it. We're going to use explosives to pop that back on the rim. Explosives to put a tyre back on his rim? Yeah. I'm involved, mate. Are you sure you want to be involved, Marcus? You've got your whole life ahead of you. Excellent, but first, I'm going to talk to you a bit about tyres. Do you know what they're made of? Yeah, the stuff that goes on the India pencil. Rubber. <laughs> yeah, it is that stuff, yeah, but there's two different types of rubber. Yeah. You've got synthetic rubber, right. which makes tyres and things like that, which are made from, from crude oil. And then you've got natural rubber, which is made from latex. I think I've seen this before. This looks like glue that I had at school. It's very similar, yeah. That's exactly what that glue has, isn't it? So there's two types of rubber. One that's made out of plants, yep. and others made out of crude oil. But surely you must do something to crude oil to make it look like this. You do. So you've got additives that go into it, things like sulphur. And that's called vulcanizing. And that makes it rubbery, strong, and perfect for car tires like this. I'm no expert, but I'm 100% sure that is not a car tire. Now, you might have seen in racing, like drag racing, now they spin up their tyres and loads of smoke comes out. Yeah. That's to make it softer and more grippy. And really cool, Mike. I can show you the rubber, when it gets hot, we heat it up a little bit. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, that's hot. Woo. And then roll it in some gravel. It actually picks up the gravel. That's because the tyre, the rubber, is actually getting sticky, and that's perfect for gripping to the road. What about winter? So, in the winter, it gets really brittle, and you put other additives, like silicon, in it to make it nice and supple. Right. I can show you what it does in the winter with liquid nitrogen. How cold is that? This is minus 196 degrees centigrade. Right. So, I'll pop this into the liquid nitrogen, and you'll see the liquid nitrogen boil off as soon as it hits, because that's 200 degrees Whoa. hotter than the liquid nitrogen itself when it stops bubbling. You can hear it yeah. cracking already. When it stops bubbling, it's got down to minus 196 degrees. Right, that's about it. Ready to see this? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wow. It might actually go by... No, I'm going to hit it with a hammer. OK, ready? Wow, look at that. Crispy tyre. Yeah, very crispy. So you don't want to get your tyres to blow minus 196 <laughs> degrees, otherwise they'll just crack and, and destroy like that. We've seen how tyres can be at the mercy of the elements, but here at Hack HQ, we're here to help as ever. So how can we go from crispy tyres to roadside recovery? Why, with an epic hack, of course. So how are we going to use everything you showed me to blow that up? Well, I'm so pleased you asked, because this is a big tyre. In a workshop, you need loads of gas to get in that, so you just use an air compressor. We don't have an air compressor. Of course you don't. We've got explosives. Of course you do. So we're going to use explosives to put that back on the bead instantly. So blowing this up by blowing something up. Blowing something up by blowing something up. Let's do it. Perfect. We'll be back later to check how Mike and Marcus get on with their epic car hack. Now, from black rubber tyres to a black metal bad guy, as we show you a clip from a galaxy far, far away. This speedometer special effect car hack would make George Lucas jealous. But assuming it's not just down to sci-fi wizardry, how exactly does it work? This is a brilliant idea. I think there's nothing more important when you're driving than having something that distracts you from looking at the road ahead. Genius. A speedometer is actually not that complicated when you boil it down. You've got a wire that connects the axle, which is spinning at the same rate as your tyres. Easy for you to say it's not complicated, Chris. You're a scientist. I think for us mere mortals, though, a demonstration is in order. When your wheels spin, they turn a long metal cable which is attached to a magnet. This spinning magnet sits inside a metal cup, and this is where we use the force of electromagnetism. As the magnet spins, it forces the cup to make its own tiny magnetic fields. The magnets interact, and the cup spins without anything even touching it. And that's how you know exactly how fast you're going when you're next travelling through hyperspace. 
The spinning cup is also connected straight to your car's speed dial, which uses a spring to stop it turning too far and pulls it back down again as your speed drops. So as you speed up, that will increase the number of rotations of the wheel and the axle, which will increase the amount of times that the metal wire rotates. That will increase the amount of current that's being induced, and that, the more current you get, will increase the height of the needle. And obviously, as you increase the height of the needle, Darth Vader raises his lightsaber, and if you go fast enough, Darth Vader will actually cut his own head off. Decapitation notwithstanding, this looks like far too much time and effort only to prove you're the most desperate sci-fi fan in the galaxy. To paraphrase Yoda, hack this is, hit this is not. You know those all-terrain cars you see driving around suburban neighbourhoods? Well, this clip shows you what they're actually designed for. Where this driver is going, they don't need roads. Like the best internet videos, this is dangerous, impossible, and features a crowd of laughing onlookers. I think they're going to regret the fact that they just went to a drive through and got milkshakes in the cup holders. There are a couple of things at work here that make this hack excellent. The first is down to the tyres and the traction they have. Those tyres are massive rubber things, huge and ridged, which means they have a lot of contact with the surface. The other thing going on here is the amount of torque or power that the car is providing to those wheels. But of course, that can't move the car unless there's friction between the wheel and the ground. And then you have momentum. Now, momentum is the mass of the car, so sort of its weight, really, and, and how fast it's going in a certain direction. And um, so you need to make sure that they have enough momentum to get up the hill. Either that or really, really, really good seat belts. You can achieve a similar thing by driving along normally, but just rotating your camera 90 degrees. It's much safer. Impressive though this is, I'm not sure I can award this 4x4 a hit just for doing its job. A mountainous miss. If you've always wanted a way to attract stressed out Scandinavians into your car, this next modification hack is very specifically for you. Like moths to a flame, they appear within minutes of any intense cube of heat being left out in the open. This truly is the hack you never knew you needed. I've seen this before in this country. Steamy windows on the car and lots of people inside. In fact, there's a lay-by just outside where I live and uh, there's a whole load of people have those as well. I'm not even going to ask, George. The reason you can stand such high temperatures when you're in a sauna is because it's dry heat. And dry heat means that you can sweat because uh, there's not so much moisture in the air, so you don't cook too quickly. There's nothing I enjoy more than sitting in a hot wooden crate uh, in my pants with a load of strangers. I actually believe that. In a sauna, heat is transmitted in the three classic ways that heat can be transmitted. Convection, conduction and radiation. If you're sat nice and near the coals, then you can get radiant heat directly from those coals. If you're sat a bit further away, then convection can carry that heat around the sauna. Then through the air directly, the heat can be transferred to your skin by conduction. Amazingly, there's three million saunas in Finland and only 5.5 million Finns. Uh, which averages out to about 1.8 fins per sauna. What they definitely do is raise your endorphin levels, because you're heating yourself up, so stressing the body. Um, and that has beneficial effects. Driving is one of the leading causes of stress worldwide, so this sauna on wheels is an amazing way to create some good karma. A health-giving hack hit. This next hack not only makes washing your car fun, it speeds the whole process up too. Just make sure you wear your waterproof dancing shoes. Look at this guy. What was it Mary Poppins said? Find the fun and snap the jobs again. It looks like he's conducting. Conducting orchestra. I don't know what music they'd be playing. I suppose car wash, the song, or Handel's water music. Can someone order George a taxi, please? The one issue with this hack is that it's quite wasteful using a hose to wash your car. You can get through about 40 to 50 litres in a minute. 10 minutes, that's 450 litres washing your car. That's almost half a tonne of water. Compare that to a bucket of soapy water, might be about five litres. It's just a huge, huge amount of water wasted. One way to avoid wasting lots and lots of fresh water on washing your car is to use grey water. And grey water is when you collect up used water from your sinks, from your bathrooms, and from your showers, and you use that to wash the car instead. This kung fu car cleaner might be entertaining, but I'm afraid in the interests of Mother Earth, this hack is a washout. Over to Hack HQ. 
The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier at Hack HQ, Mike showed you how tyres perform or don't perform under different extreme temperatures. Now we head back over there to see an epic way to get them on your wheels in the first place. And it turns out all you need is one simple ingredient, which Mike is particularly fond of. Explosives. Here we go. Let's do it. Right, let me get this. This is a maroon. What's a maroon? Now, a maroon is the thing that makes the noise in fireworks. So it's a tube with an explosive inside. You light the fuse, and because it's confined, it actually burns faster and hotter. OK. So I'm going to stick this inside and light the fuse. When ignited, Mike's maroon will set off an explosion which will expand the air inside the tyre, forcing it to set around the rim. You're going to make a bit of noise as well? A bit of noise, yeah. It wouldn't be any kind of epic hack if it wasn't unnecessarily loud. Right. You OK? Uh, I guess so. I think I need to be over where you are, though. <laughs> a wise decision, Marcus. First rule of how hacks work is, if in doubt, stand where Mike stands. That's nice. Right. right. I like the fuse. So this is going to be like a firework show inside a tyre? Pretty much. It's going to be a firework going off inside a tyre, which is going to use all of that gas to reseat it. So more like one firework going off inside a rubber tube, then. Sounds epic, guys. OK. OK. The fuse is lit. Right. Here it goes. Sorry! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Mike proves once again there is nothing you can't hack with explosives of some description. You can now add a rocket to your emergency breakdown kit with a clear conscience. All we need now is a little valve, which goes into the tire. Oh, it's deflating a little bit. Quickly get that valve in. So what was crazy about that is that there was real hot air in there, some really hot gases in there, yep. but it didn't melt the tire? It didn't. Why not? Because it burns really, really fast. Right. So there's a hot expansion of gas, but because it burns a fraction of a second, it doesn't actually melt it. But it has deflated a bit. Yeah, what are we going to do about that, mate? Well, what you're going to do about it. <laughs> Have oh. fun. Cheers. Mike. Gets to do all the cool stuff with explosions and after. Even. Yeah, I would feel sorry for you, Marcus, but with Mike around, you should have seen this coming. We've burned all the rubber in sight and tore up the highway in our Cars episode. Time for you to set out on your own, but remember, always wear a seatbelt, unless your car is a sauna. Join us next time for more life-saving, money-easing hacks.